Motorcycling is all about freedom, the open road, and the uninhibited joy of twisting the throttle. Why wouldn't you want to share it with others? Should be easy enough. Strap on a video camera and hit record, right? Well, not really, no. Images and video, as amazing as they may be, do not necessarily express the feeling very well. And while you may be in awe of some amazing view out on the open road, to others it might just be 10 minutes of boredom. Before we get started, let me say right from the off that a lot depends upon what kind of video you're making, and that will affect which pieces of advice make sense to you and which ones do not. The different types of movies might include an adventure, which is showing a trip in an edited package like a story. You could do a review describing or showing something. For example, I do reviews of roads that I've written, which show a lot of information, but it's not really a story. Maybe you're going to do a documentary, you and your buddies out for a ride. Maybe it's just for fun, some clips of you having fun on your bike, but not necessarily in a scripted way. Or maybe you're going to try a vlog, which is a video blog with you on your bike talking about something. Keep in mind that the following tips do not necessarily need to be taken together. That is, you don't have to do them all, all the time. Try them out individually and in different combinations to see which ones you like best. So what goes into making an awesome video? There are a few things that can make your video more awesome than if you just filmed it and throw it up on YouTube. There is the audio, which is the sound of the motorcycle itself, or some music that you're adding. There's the video, which would be the camera positions, the different angles you might use, obviously the editing that goes into that. And there's what I like to refer to as context, which might be additional things that you add to your video, things such as photos, a picture of a map that you've used, could be video snippets, little things that you filmed of a cow in a field or someone closing a door. Obviously you've got the narration and any on-screen text that goes into explaining the scene itself, what you're doing, who you are, etc. Let's start by talking about audio. Take any camera, attach it to your bike or helmet and go riding, and what do you get? Wind noise. Holy cow, people are going to think you're riding in a tornado. Even at fairly slow speeds, wind will dominate the audio of most action cameras if they are facing directly into it. Sometimes you can hide the camera behind a windscreen, which might reduce the wind noise a bit. But generally speaking, you're talking about wind speeds of 50 to 100 miles an hour. That's a lot of wind. There are so many videos out there with great scenes of motorcycles and curves and a lot of great scenery, but it's all dominated by the wind noise you end up having to turn it into a silent movie to watch it. No thanks. One thing you can do is remove the audio from the camera and put in some super awesome song, or less than super awesome song, that will make it awesome. It's not as bad as Tornado Alley. And to be fair, music only videos can be quite good if they are done in the right way, as long as you're using multiple viewpoints or editing scenes together. But 20 minutes of one scene with music isn't as good to watch as it might feel while you're doing it. A second thing is to carefully match the mood of the music with the video that you're trying to express. A straight, slow cruise washed to some hardcore rock music might not come across really well. Watch these examples and see how the different music affects the mood of the clip and how some of them don't really quite fit.
consider including the sound of the bike. Twins, triples, fours, stock and aftermarket exhaust, we love the way the sound hits us in the spine. Motorcyclists love hearing the bike. Even in this example, this BMW R1150R Rockster, with a pretty tame exhaust, can enhance the experience. Don't rely on your camera's microphone. Make sure that you're going to mic the bike. The key to getting good sound of the bike itself, whether the exhaust or the intake, is an external microphone. This may be in your helmet, or it could be something you set up behind the seat, near the exhaust, or by the instrument cluster. It just depends upon your bike and its setup. You'll be amazed at how wind noise gets all over the place, so be prepared to try a few spots to find a good one. For advanced movie making types, you might consider a separate audio recording device so you don't have a cord running to the camera. This allows you to change the camera's position quickly without dealing with the microphone as well. I'd recommend a high quality recording device. I've tried a cheap one off eBay and it just didn't last and it turned out that it just wasn't high enough quality. Another thing you should absolutely try is adding narration along with your music and the sound of the bike of course. It can really enhance the feeling of the ride for the viewer. You can mention things of interest, the road conditions, or simply how great of a day it is. People connect with people and it draws them in. The key thing when it comes to narration is to do it after the ride. Don't try and record yourself in your helmet unless you're doing a vlog. Record yourself back at home. Use something such as Audacity or even your cell phone to record it. It's pretty simple to bring it into the movie and cut and position it as needed. Keep in mind that I'm not a trained multimedia professional, and with just a little trial and error for classmates in the School of Hard Knocks, I've been able to make these videos. When recording your narration, if you mess up or something else happens like a phone call or your cat decides to start meowing, you do not need to start over. Simply leave a pause or a cough as a marker and keep on going or redoing the section, and you can do it over and over again until you're happy with it. It's very easy to remove the bad sections using software such as Audacity, and it's way better than starting over from the beginning. Good quality video isn't all that hard to capture these days. The various action cameras out there do a great job, such as GoPro or Drift and the like. I won't get into all the technical discussions about frame rates and things like that, but I will say that you should try a few to find what works best for you and your bike. On the highest setting of my camera, the Drift HD, I'll get a vibration wave at certain RPM, but when I set it down a level to something like a 50 FPS or 30 FPS, I don't get this wave. On my other motorcycle, I don't get it at all. Often people will have loved the ride, they experience the emotion of being out there, so the movie will be one of unending stream of riding. You'll see the whole thing without experiencing any of the emotion. Even with the soundtrack, it gets boring to watch the scenery go by mile after mile if you're not emotionally engaged. If your goal is to encourage others to ride, or try to give them a taste of the experience that you had, you're going to need to edit your video, even if just a little bit. Each element, cut scene, sound, music change, or words spoken, engages the viewer. Okay, here's an example. I challenge you to watch this entire clip, and keep in mind that it's only one minute long. It's really hard to do because it's not very engaging.
I'm not saying you can't have a longer video section, one uncut segment. What I'm saying is only leave it in if it enhances the experience and make sure you're adding in narration or music or motorcycle noise that relates to the segment. In one of your movies, try it both ways. Uncut and cut it into chunks with fades and wipes and see which one you like better. When it comes to filming, you can also introduce various camera positions or angles to get some variety, such as back directly at you, off to the side, could be mounted lower down or facing backward, could be on the helmet. The main reason someone is watching your motorcycle video is to see the road, the scenery, and to be drawn into that feeling of the ride. Deep in winter, I watch videos just to keep me going. Using multiple camera angles can be just the spice that makes your video stand out. Here are some camera angles to give you an idea. I've paired it with some spunky music so you can see how that affects the mood as well. Something boring like these clips is much better with music. Try watching it with the sound off and you'll see what I mean about how the music affects the video. let's talk about what I think of as context. This is the use of photos or video clips, narration or on-screen text to set the stage or enhance the story. You can tell viewers where you are, which direction you're heading, what the day's like, the town, things of interest. Narration adds a personal connection because you're communicating directly to the viewer. By no means do you need to chatter away the whole time. Anything of interest to you might be interest to your viewers. Narration is a great way to introduce the movie and can be thrown in throughout to really enhance it. It's also a great way to encourage people at the end. So now it's your turn to get out and go. Or if you like this video, please rate it, comment, or share it. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you have a movie that's already put together, try adding some narration to see the difference that it can make. Along with narration, you can feed in photographs you've taken, or what I like to call snippets, which are short video clips that I take using my smartphone. These snippets can be things like a gas pump, a fence post, a dog, a duck, could be the bike, could be your helmet, could be your gloves, anything. They really make a difference, and they're very easy to film whenever you take a break or stop to look at something nifty. These snippets are a key factor in taking it to the next level. The key takeaway here is that snippets do not need to be fancy. A road, a car, a store, gravel, grass blowing are all things that you can bring in. Don't fret about setting up a shot. Just shoot a lot of things and toss out whatever doesn't work. These snippets add mood and break up the movie to show it from the pre-ride, the break time, or something of interest it turns the video into a ride experience. I recommend filming from 5 to 10 seconds, so if you want them long you have it, but you can always cut them down. I've never wished that I filmed a shorter length of time. It's always much easier to remove what you don't want than to add something that you didn't film. On-screen text should not be a substitute for narration. That is, don't put up a full paragraph of explanation. On-screen text is great for things like town names, crossing the state line, the name of the road you're on, or things like that. Simple contextual markers. Lastly, as I said before, take whichever of these tips that you want, work them together, see what works best for you. And don't forget to check out the description below for a couple of completed examples. 
to help make sure your video gets found when people are looking for it when you upload it to YouTube, be sure to include keywords in the title and description. Whether that's the type of motorcycle that you're riding, or the road that you're on, or possibly the trip that you're taking. Say something like Harley 883 Iron, or Kawasaki Versus. Don't just say, nice motorcycle trip. Include the state park, the highway you're using, or if it's a cross-country trip, or if you're doing Route 66. These keywords in the title and description can make all the difference. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found this information to be useful. Please let me know in the comments below or send me an email. Now it's your turn to get out there and make your own awesome movie. Please share, like, and comment this video. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a holler. You can check out all my videos on YouTube at BMRTV or go to my website, bestmotorcycleroads.com. Thanks for watching.